So I'm Simon Platt. I'm um, at the University of Central Lancashire. Um, I, I do teach on our computing degrees, or students of computing degrees. I'm actually, um, by training um, and background, an um, electronic engineer. And I was sitting in my office about a month ago, and there was a knock at the door, and, and Alan came in, and we, we had a, a chat about um, computing at school. And as part, during that chat, I sort of casually gestured at some computer that I had on my desk. And I said, oh, what's that? And I said, oh, well, that's our um, high C ground support equipment. Oh, I thought, what's this? So what's high C? He said, well, it's, um... And he said, oh, that's interesting. Said, Would you come and talk to this group about this, this project? So that's, 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 that's why I'm here. And I will tell you what it is in a minute. He said, um... I said, well, what, what do you want to know? He said, well, just, just tell the group a little bit about an application of computing that you're involved with. At, at the University of Central Lancashire. Mm. Yeah. That's no problem. So, this I should point out is a project that isn't directly related to the teaching work that we're doing at the University. It's part of um, um, a wider research project and um, uh, a new um, initiative that we have uh, supported by the uh, United States Space Act Agreement with NASA. So this is a project in collaboration between um, ourselves at, at UCLan, um, NASA Marshall Space Flight Center um, in Alabama, and the Smithsonian Astronomical, uh, sorry, Astrophysical Observatory at, at Harvard. So I mentioned NASA and Harvard, and I said, oh yes, okay, we'd like to hear about that. Tell us about it. So what is it? <coughs> I see is a scientific experiment um, that will fly, have its first flight next summer, uh, in about 12 months' time, June or July 2012. And HI-C stands for High Resolution Coronal Imaging, uh, in this case of the sun. So we're sending up into um, near space on a, a short flight, a short rocket flight, um, uh, a camera that will view the sun in the ultraviolet with higher spatial resolution than has been possible for the two. So um, you may be aware that we um, have quite a, a substantial activity at the university in um, astrophysics and particularly in, in sun science. I don't know familiar with the Solar Dynamics Observatory um, project that we're, we're involved with. Whether you're telling me about it, just, just, just... I don't know much about it. You don't know much about it, okay. So we have, uh, well, I'll not, talk, I'll not talk much about that, but we have a, um, an established relationship with, um, with Marshall Space Flight Centre in terms of the science. We receive and analyse data from um, systems that uh, observe the sun in particular, not just the sun, but the sun in particular. And this is our first in um, incursion into space engineering. So uh, I'm now extending that work so that we're developing a system to gather the data as well as systems to analyze the data. So where do computers come into this, I suppose, is the question. And of course, it's a computer controlled camera. So we have um, an activity which has just begun, began in earnest, well, Alan came to see me about a month ago, and we just got the computer, and it was just on the <coughs> desk. So it began in earnest about a month ago. And there's a small group of us at, at UCLan that are putting together a rig of several computers, which will mimic the system that operates on the, um, uh, the aircraft, the rocket, and um, then we, can, we will develop software in conjunction with NASA in order to support that activity. So we're procuring um, this special camera. The UCLan's role in this project is to um, provide the special camera to the project. And then we have to interface that system to an embedded Linux box that will sit um, on the um, on the rocket and control the camera during operation. So the um, 
the system will fly um, um, on a scientific rocket. It will be um, directed to point at the sun with the control of the pointing camera. And we have to control the camera, or the system has to control the camera, and the point that we're contributing to uh, primarily is to um, control an interface to this camera and to capture um, very large so high resolution images of, um, of the sun's corona um, and safely store them on board the system for recovery and uh, transmit um, subsets of those images back down to Earth in real time for analysis on the ground during the flight. The flight will last for a few minutes and the, um, the rocket and the camera will be recovered after flight. So it's controlled from the ground station and we will downlink the data to the ground station um, as much as is possible during the flight so that um, um, the operators on the ground can control the camera and the parameters. So we have a system um, with uh, an embedded um, camera controller on, um, on the rocket which um, interfaces to um, a standard telemetry system. So we have an interface to a telemetry system which is partly through um, an RS-232 serial link, in fact there are two RS-232 serial links, partly through a, a, a high speed um, um, uh, parallel digital link of a um, bespoke design. So interfaces to um, uh, a telemetry system that we are not responsible for and then at the other end of the telemetry system we have some ground control computers who receive the data and process the data on the ground in such a way that that, that then enables us to control the camera uh, parameters or control, enables the operators to control the camera parameters. So the particular challenge that we have at the moment is that we have um, um, very large images from this camera. We have um, uh, 16 megabyte image, 16 megabyte, sorry, 16 megapixel, 16 bit um, image. So we have therefore 32 megabytes of data um, at um, um, a, a, a variable frame rate but that is likely to be more than one frame a second, um, which have to be captured from this camera and um, processed and stored and subsets of that transmitted down to um, the ground station um, on a, um, a very compact embedded system with a modest amount of processing power and a modest amount of memory. So the particular challenge that we have at the moment is investigating the camera supplier's application program interface. Um, and in fact, um, investigating in particular the way that the camera suppliers, camera drivers are implemented um, in order to try to optimize those to ensure that um, um, the limited memory and indeed processing power available on board the um, embedded system is adequate for the job that we have. So at the moment we have um, uh, a small group working at the university on um, how we can um, best optimize this low level um, uh, interface between um, an embedded Linux system and this um, um, camera, um, um, uh, this, this camera driver which we, which we expect to have to modify and support. So we're looking at um, uh, doing some detailed low-level programming using a combination of C and C++ and um, working close um, um, uh, sympathy with, 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 the, with the Linux kernel. And our current task is to um, develop at least, uh, well, develop two versions of this software um, that we will shortly test 
uh, well, we'll test it first on our rig here at the UPAM. And in mid, no, in fact, late August now, we'll be testing that at um, um, uh, NASA's facility at, um, at Marshall Space Flight Center. Subsequent to that, we expect to take um, delivery of um, a camera and um, um, uh, maintain this software along with other parts of the project in um, preparation, as I say, for, for, for flight next year. I shall point out here, actually, that you might have noticed that um, um, we're developing the software that we need to drive the camera now, and we haven't got a camera. And so we, we need to integrate our camera onto our rig. So we have two, LA, two um, um, approaches to solving that problem. Um, one is that um, here at UCLAN we have to simulate, we haven't done this yet, we have to simulate the interface that the camera will provide to our system in order properly to exercise the, the code that we're developing. Whereas um, at uh, NASA's lab they also don't have the camera yet, the first camera is due for delivery in September, late September, early October, and they have an, an emulator, so they have a hardware simulation of what the camera should present to their system. So they're working with that emulator, we will be working with that emulator um, later on in the summer, in the autumn. At the moment we're actually having to work with, or we will be having to work with, over the next few weeks, um, software that we ourselves have to design and build in order to simulate this camera. Um, and that's the high C project, or the status of the high C project. Um, uh, we hope that that will lead on to further work on similar programs with NASA or with other partners. And that's just one of um, um, many aspects of what we do, not just in computing, but also in engineering, um, in the engineering discipline and in physical sciences at UFAN, where computing is key. So whatever we do, um, whether it's doing astrophysical calculations or simulations of astrophysical phenomena, whether it's, um, uh, as I was doing earlier today, examining a student who produced a thesis on um, uh, the control and simulation of a robotic arm, computing, meaning computing, programming, understanding the operation of the system rather than IT is key. Um, whether it's uh, development of synthetic environments, which we do quite a lot, whether it's um, analysis of imaging signals from a variety of um, a variety of sources, a variety of applications, and computing is the key. And I'm um, uh, really pleased to see um, the sorts of things that um, Alan has been talking about today, and what we've seen. She's been I'm very impressed with the things that uh, happen at, 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 um, at, at Newman College. Um, the sorts of um, problem-solving skills, abstract. Um, uh, abstract thinking skills um, that I think this group is aiming to develop in uh, school pupils and college students from um, uh, over a variety of ages I think is very very important very useful and um, um, uh, I'm sure that the students concerned will find it useful in their further studies and their further careers and I'm sure that the sorts of things that you're discussing here will make our jobs um, easier and uh, more fulfilling as well when students come to see us at, um, uh, or our colleagues at the universities.